Welcome back to another podcast episode where we help junior developers grow and aspiring developers get jobs. Um, today, we're actually going over Deb Mountain. So I've heard a lot of good things about Deb Mountain and I uh, invited three guests on, Sean, Ethan, and Amy, and we're going to actually talk about their experience. So let's actually, we'll go from left to right on my screen. Sean, you want to do a little intro for yourself? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Sean Parmar. Uh, I've been a full stack engineer at uh, Invitation Homeless for about a year and some change now. Uh, Dev Mountain wise, I went there in 2018, uh, in August 2018, and I graduated around November 2018. Uh, so it's been a little bit. Things have changed, but um, you know, I've still kind of kept up with that. So I'll still be able to give some insight. Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Um, and I'll do a little intro. Um, so I actually graduated from Full Stack Academy, and then I became a UI engineer at a healthcare company, software engineer at a tech ed company, and then a Full Stack engineer, kind of like a business automation company. It's kind of a weird category. I never know how to call it. But that was my last position until I started my own business earlier this year. And um, yeah, that's it for me. How about you, Ethan? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, like you said, my name's Ethan. I've been a software developer for three years now. I, I started working uh, part-time in, like, 2017. And after about, like, a, a year or so, I started, I went to Dev Mountain, kind of got more experience, and then got a job at um, a bank, BBVA, so doing software development for them. Um, so I've been doing that for a little over a year and a half now. Did you go through some sort of part-time program while you were doing the part-time job or? Uh, no, I, I, I worked for my dad doing um, like web development for him. And then like, once I figured out that's what I wanted to do, I was looking for boot camps to try to like kind of springboard my career, if you will, um, to get some more, I think kind of cutting edge technology sort of trying to find some more relevant um, things. So that mountain was great for that. Okay, that's really cool that you got that opportunity to like test the waters out a little bit before you dove in. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Amy? Uh, I'm. I graduated Dev Mountain back in 2018. I went from June to like the very end of August, and uh, now I and then I I got a job at soft, uh, Mobi Mobility RE. I'm their software developer. I've been there for about a year. Okay. Very cool. Well, thank you. And thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Um, let's dive in. So what, what I actually like to do is kind of start with the application process like, or, and what that's like. And Sean, you had mentioned that you kept up a little bit. I'd be really curious to hear if they've changed their process because I know Full Stack Academy did and a lot of different boot camps did. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think about the application process? I mean, I can, I can go. Uh, so uh, Phoenix campus wise, and, and this, I'm guessing this applies to all others, right? Like you guys can correct me on this. And I'm, I'm just saying that because during my time there, it seemed like each campus kind of had slightly different ways of doing things. So, uh, when I was joining Dev Mountain, the application process was basically, um, you had this like base camp type thing where, uh, for I think four to six weeks, you had to go through these modules. And then like three weeks before your start date, um, you had to meet with a mentor. Uh, I think it was each week or a couple times a week. That part I don't remember too well. And at the end, you have an interview. And depending on that interview, you know, you would go or you wouldn't be able to go. Um, and that, that, was, that was the gist of it. You know, that, that, there wasn't like too much to it besides that. Uh, throughout, uh, as time went on, uh, because eventually, you know, I, I, I worked there at Dev Mountain. And so I got to be on the other side of that, um, process. Uh, eventually there was a point where that process was kind of scrapped. There was no more, no more base camp. It's just, Hey, you want to come to Dev Mountain? Go ahead, sign up. You know, that's it. Um, get a loan, if, you know, give us your money, whatever. Uh, but, um, and from what I've understood and what I heard, that's still that way even now. So getting into it won't be as difficult as other boot camps. Okay. Were your experiences pretty similar? Yeah. That all sounds pretty probably pretty much exactly what I did. 
Yeah, I, I just remember the base camp stuff being like a lot of work, but I, I liked it because like once you got to the boot camp, then you kind of could hit the ground running. Yeah. But yeah, that was my experience. Well, it was nice too because they, I remember they had like a, a Slack or something that you could ask questions. So it wasn't like you're just doing it by yourself. It kind of just felt like just going, starting the boot camp kind of with less intense, but you know, a little precursor. precursor. Yeah, I thought that, I thought it was great. Um, you know, even from just like coming into it standpoint and then like even after graduating, just because you, you got to kind of know if you didn't do any sort of coding before that base camp, this was like, your wake up call, like, Hey, am I interested in this? You know, before I put for all this money, am I interested in this? Yeah. So, I, I, I didn't do any experience. I didn't have any experience. I think I wrote a for loop on Khan Academy or something. It was like, <laughs> this is what I want to do, you know? So that was massively necessary for me to actually go through the boot camp. I can't imagine if, if they wouldn't have required it when I went. <laughs> do you feel like the base camp um, helped set you up? for the boot camp to succeed a little bit more? For me, because yeah. I, I just didn't know any syntax, then yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, for sure. Because especially since, you know, the boot camps move pretty quickly, I think having that, that foundation of like just basic stuff was really helpful because then you could actually, you know, ha have someone help you with the things that are more challenging. So that's why I love the base camp. And really the base camp was just like a really nice, kind of tutorial for like all the different basic it, all right mine was javascript i think a lot of them were but um yeah it was just kind of a basic overview of all of it so we definitely touched like went and touched on some of the stuff we learned in base camp once we got to the boot camp but yeah it was i found it really helpful i mean that that was a great part about it you knew going into it that everyone in that room you know went through that same thing so you at least we will, you could assume you all have at least that level, that same foundation. So then, like you said, it's it's kind of better because you all can help each other out. You all kind of get where where like where you're all coming from. So. And Sean, uh, you had mentioned that you heard that they took base camp out. Yeah, there uh, there was a point while working there that they they just took it out. There was no more um, base camp, no more interviews. What they did was they took base camp and they. Um, put it in the first week uh, and also there used to be like a week off they just completely omitted that to make up for that you know mm. extra week coming in so now base camp was when you got there which again could be it could be an issue you know it's like do you know if you want to do this and by then by the time you're already there so like you've already gone through that process and the payments and all that so it's I, I, I'm going to be blunt, man. Like I, I was, I was disappointed when they removed that. Yeah. Super disappointed. Yeah. It sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I like that they put that in. Huh? Interesting. <laughs> okay. So what do you guys think of the curriculum? And this is a longer conversation too, because this is <laughs> kind of like really where we focus on. Um, think about like, I think two good questions are, Actually, let's start with this. What did you guys learn? Yeah, I'll All right. go. <laughs> 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 we learned um, just basically a, a full stack JavaScript. So there was React, uh, some vanilla JavaScript, Node, Express, and, uh, and then basic HTML, CSS. So you just build like a full stack project by the time you're done. Okay, so you guys end up with uh, one project for your portfolio or something to put on your resume? Be two uh, personal projects and a group project. Technically three if you count the NoDB, but nobody, I mean, you don't really put your, your NoDB <laughs> project on the on your resume. So okay. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're really proud of it. <laughs> right, yeah. Which... I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I have a, a friend that built like a, a no DB, like Pokédex thing. So he, he definitely, I mean, he put that on there. I, that one I would put on there. Like, dude, you know, he was good. <laughs> uh, I feel uh, like, but yeah, I mean, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I feel like a lot of uh, Cody boot camps go the Pokemon route. Like Full Stack Academy did it and several people that I've had on, you've built something revolving uh, around so Pokemon. Relatable. 
<laughs> what? I liked, I mean, I thought it was fun. I really did. Uh, well, what do you guys think of the curriculum? Uh, yeah. so, uh, you go ahead. Okay. No, yeah. So <laughs> I, I really, I really liked it. I think the one thing that's about any curriculum in a boot camp is that, uh, it's going to be changing. And like, even when I was there, like looking at the cohorts in front of me and behind me and seeing how they were like changing things, um, even between us, like just a very, just a few weeks, because they see that like, oh, this is changing. We need to start showing, teaching them, you know, a little bit more about view maybe, um, cause there's, this is something that's more new. So I think, uh, having that structure and one thing that I really liked about what they did is and I, again, I'm not super familiar with the other boot camps, but all of our, um, projects, like we had to put on GitHub and like, it was kind of annoying at first because like, if like everything you're just cloning down projects and then like making a small little change and pushing it back up. But I found that actually was really helpful for me because like GitHub is like where I live. So, or not, not necessarily GitHub, but like Git. Um, and so being familiar with that and having to use it every single day, it was, was really helpful. But. So even like kind of in the beginning when you would have a little, tutorial or some sort of like a challenge you would always clone it make some changes and push it up like where all of your challenges on github and yeah so they had not they had a uh i think a canvas or something where yeah. that's where like you watch a lot of videos okay um and they have they had small like small things on them. that was what i remember more in the base camp um was a lot of like the actual on canvas or I don't remember they had some other thing where you like would create a for loop and it had to print out so many things and then it would pass or fail. Um, but from what I remember and John, you, you might correct me, but a lot of the challenges we had in the actual boot camp was on GitHub where we had something where it would have to pass all these tests and it was really annoying. Yeah. Oh um, man. Yeah. Jasmine spec runners. So anybody, exactly. Yeah. Oh, flat like PTSD right there. from that. <laughs> Why is it red? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because like later on in the curriculum, after you go through uh, testing, I don't know if you all did this, but I, I went back to those spec runners and, and you could see the, the test folders and like now, like now all that seems more like English, you know, now I can kind of understand that. And it's just, you could see that, yeah, maybe like things were wrong. Things were red, even though they shouldn't be just because the test case didn't account for that. That was it. Yeah. They were like um, robust uh, tests. Yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I wasn't crazy. It didn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there were there were a few times where uh, even the, the lead mentor at the time when I was a student there, um, he, like, I showed him, like, what is wrong with this? And he went to pull up his own, uh, like, his own repo, and he did the exact same thing I did. And so he just was like, all right, you're good. Just ignore that red. <laughs> Jazz runners. Oh, no thanks. Never again. <laughs> so going back to the spec that you guys mentioned what database did you guys pick up postgres postgres okay w did you use some sort of like orm with it or anything to no i wish i wish <laughs> well, uh, be careful what you wish for there <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah you're right you're right you're right yeah, because at this job, we use those, but yeah, you're right. Probably if I had been exposed to that back then, I probably would have been like, I oh, don't no, this is too confusing, you know, but. Well, like SQLize was a big one for Postgres and like the running joke for our cohort was like, we would spend more time trying to read documentation from, from SQLize because it was so awful. Like everyone hated it every time they had to look something up where we would just spend like days on it. And eventually our instructors had to tell us to stop it and like, just move on and try and like, it, it can be frustrating, but um, I do think picking up an ORM can be handy. Um, so, oh, go ahead. Postgres wise, like um, we, we had this package to connect our server to, you know, our, our database or the connection string. And then like SQL wise, we, we wouldn't use anything from like, like SQLize nor RM. It'd just be a SQL file with just raw Postgres you know, in that file. That oh, interesting. Okay. What about, um, okay, so you learned, it was all JavaScript, right? And then you picked up React on top of it for the front end. How'd that go? So, yeah. 
I mean, the first, you know, React in the beginning was definitely a struggle. I think uh, for a lot of people, like myself, definitely myself included, props was something that I just could, I didn't get at first. Like, what, what is happening here? How do you do the thing? You know? Um, but as with all things, you know, eventually something clicks and you get it. So my experience with that. Okay. Yeah. For me, it was, I just, I just had such a hard time knowing what was React and what was just like plain JavaScript. And it, it really, it really confused me. And sometimes I think I just get so in my head because I'm just like, like I couldn't get past some concepts. So I just didn't know what it was. You know, like, oh, that's just JavaScript. I'm like, what, what do you mean it's just JavaScript? <laughs> like, I don't, what does that mean? <laughs> you know? so, so for me, yeah. I think it would have been nicer to have them kind of separate. But I felt like we went into it really fast. And then... Yeah, I feel that for sure. Because, because again, like the thing with the boot camp is you only have so long, mm-hmm. and so like they they want you to like get familiar with these things and get proficient at React. And I feel like most people, I mean, if you complete the course, you're proficient at React. Um, and I I was pretty familiar with like vanilla JavaScript, um, and I feel like that was really helpful. Like before going in, so it was really helpful, and like I could see how things relate and like how React was kind of like, okay, this is just a loop, you know, you're just printing out stuff, you're just returning this, you know, uh, this HTML elements. And that, that was pretty simple. So, um, or not simple, but it made more sense. I also like, we coming from vanilla JavaScript, I also was thought like React was the coolest thing ever. Cause I was like, wait, you can, <laughs> you can just like loop over stuff and like print it out. <laughs> wait, what? And I think I appreciated it a lot. Um, yeah. instead of just, so I, I don't know. I, I liked, I like jumping into it, but I can like right from the get go, but I can see how it could be confusing to distinguish like what's vanilla JavaScript. What's, and what's the framework. Um, yeah. I think if I would have any kind of JavaScript experience at all, I'd be like right. be easier. How many weeks in did you start learning react? I think two for us. Oh, wow. This was like before they, again, before they removed Basecamp, I think it was the first week was some uh, um, some basic stuff that you did over Basecamp, and then yeah. it was, bam, React. It's like, it's like draw a circle, you know, that meme, draw a circle, and then the next thing is, okay, draw the rest of the cat. You know, that, that's kind of how it was. It's like, I mean, eventually it all, it all does click, but <laughs> it was just so hard sometimes, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's, that's really... Um... That's really difficult to pick up. That's a tough transition. Um, I'm not saying this is the way to do it, but I think one way Full Stack Academy did it was we basically, with jQuery, we learned about the idea of a virtual DOM and we kind of built our own like really simple version of a virtual DOM and constantly updated it. And like we did it the hard way and then we kind of jumped into React. Because even us, like we didn't jump in until several weeks later and like just conceptualizing everything that's going on in react is tough for us as well so i think that transition it's hard because like one thing i notice and not just with your boot camp but other boot camps as well like people will come in and they'll kind of like have a react application and when they're struggling in interviews because we have a lot of mentors that help them out we kind of have them walk through like the logic what's going on tell us exactly what's going on with this and they have a really really hard time doing that they can watch tutorials and kind of get they can figure out that, okay, if I want to, if I have an array of items, this is how I'm going to display like a list of elements on the page. And then like even just asking them to repeat it from scratch without looking anything up, um, then like you can kind of discover a lot of people even have trouble with remembering the syntax for a loop in general and like how that even works. So that's, you know, I've, I've discovered that at some boot camps in the Chicago area, but I think it's hard to learn React when you really don't have a, like a solid understanding of the JavaScript fundamentals. It is yeah. really hard to learn React. And I think that's, um, that's something that boot camps have trouble with in that condensed time. But Well, and it's great if you're someone like Ethan who came in with like, mm-hmm. your base. Like, you probably, I don't know about you, if you picked it up pretty quickly. Did you feel like you did? Yeah, yeah. I felt like... I mean, it, I, this was the first time again, like learning like a framework mm-hmm. um, and like the whole create react app, like there's a lot of magic going on that I think I understand a lot of it now, probably some of it I haven't looked at in a while. I probably understand a lot more now, but to me it was kind of a magic. Um, 
and I think that again they try to like abstract a lot of the complexity out so you can actually build something that then yeah. you can show at the yeah. end. Uh, but I, I feel like it does help. It is helpful. I remember like the first day. Um, this is more HTML related, but someone was asking like, what's an attribute? And I was like, I know what that is. <laughs> and like, I, I knew what that was. And that was like really helpful to like, you have a, like a base um, where I wasn't just learning some of the, the simple, simple things, but yeah. 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 For me, I came in with just, I had, I hadn't like the most things I've done with the computer was open paint and make a picture, you know? <laughs> so I came with like no experience. So, but then there were people in my cohort who had, had jobs in WordPress or, you know, had had partial CS degrees. And so it's hard when you come in with no experience, like everyone's at a different level, but then sometimes you're like, am I just stupid? <laughs> like, or is, or is this guy really smart or, or do they have some experience to buffer their knowledge, you know? So. Yeah. I, um, what helped me, I, I think, well, I'm going to, yeah, what helped me kind of get things I think quicker was, uh, so in the housing, you know, it's two people per room, um, but I'm just like, I'm probably not going to sleep much. So like that day when I went to Walmart, I got, got some supplies. I got an air mattress, put that in the living room. And that was where I slept for three months because I didn't want to keep my roommate up. So like every day, late nights, just going over the same things over and over and over again. And that helped me in turn be able to talk about, you know, code and, kind of be able to explain to my peer like hey like this is what's kind of happening yeah like it was definitely a lot of work to kind of get it to click get react to click so uh no i'm not okay well actually i am kind of curious so you guys had housing you guys had housing that they paid for or that you would pay for it was included in yeah, the total price it, but it was a bundle <laughs> right yeah <laughs> we didn't have to pay extra for it <laughs> okay how much total was the program i think mine was i think when i went it was twelve thousand or like ten thousand five hundred i i think was, around twelve thousand dollars yeah i think it was a little it was over ten thousand but not by much yeah I think because I got loans and I also had to buy a computer. So I think mine was more because my computer was fine. <laughs> so. Okay. So you guys had mentioned that um, people had been kicked out of the program kind of early on. You said your cohort leaned up a little bit. Yeah. How, like what, what would cause you to, what would cause a student to move on from the program early? There were, there were some, so there were some that just left on their own accord. It's just, they, you know, first couple of weeks in and, you know, it's hard to judge how you're going to do in the first couple of weeks in. Right. But for them, that was it. They weren't getting much at all. Kind of like the rest of us, you know, we just started, but it was, it scared them enough to leave. So they left. Um, there were others who you're allowed to defer to the next cohort uh, a couple times, at, the, at least that was the policy at the time. Um, and at that point, you can either continue or, you know, you can leave, but most of the time people just continued. But that, that was extremely rare Like at that point. Most people, they didn't, they didn't really give it a chance um, or maybe they realized that there was, they just felt like they just weren't going to get this, so they left on their own accord. I think um i think they gave you two weeks to uh get your money back like so you and they would always tell us like you know like because everyone was struggling or at least I, a lot of people were struggling so they're like hey you know like you, you get two weeks you can you can get your money back you can defer so i i know like i think you know it's like four people like one person completely just didn't come back and then a couple people deferred and like one guy just never showed up not even for the first day so I don't know what his deal was. <laughs> so. Yeah, we had a, a few people, I think, drop the first in the first two weeks so they could get their money back. Um, and we had someone that deferred to the cohort behind us. And I feel like that's pretty, pretty normal for, for most things. People just learn at different paces or, or just they find out it's really not for them. Yeah, I probably should have deferred <laughs> to all things considered, but I was 
I was going to squirt through the pain. So. <laughs> but you made it. Yeah, I did. I ultimately I did, but yeah, how I felt, I probably, yeah, I probably should have taken two extra weeks to, I don't know, look at JavaScript. <laughs> so, I think that's pretty cool that they offer two weeks to get a refund. Because um, what I was worried about is um, this is going to be a little bit more honesty time. I think a boot camp without a strict application process that brings in people that probably aren't ready for the program can do a better job at that application process. And you get a question of, and like I've talked to, you know, different uh, staff from different boot camps and get this idea of like, at the end of the day, a boot camp's a business and how much are they leaning towards, you know, growing as a business and how much are they leaning towards actually producing really strong software engineers. Um, and so, this idea of taking away Basecamp um, and just making the application process a little bit easier, taking in people that are less prepared, my main question is, do you feel like that could affect the experience of other developers as they're trying to catch certain developers up in the curriculum and try to be adaptive? Does that affect the experience of other developers? So like, I know, um, I don't know if they still offer that two weeks, you get your money back. So, you know, with an asterisk, put that there. But um, I know like my friend, she was a mentor to the cohort, like two, a two after us. And that was when they stopped doing the, the boot camp or the, or the, yeah, the base, what camp. Is it called? base camp. Yeah. And, uh, and they were just taking them in. And she said it was just the, the work ethic of like, there just wasn't like you got like some people that were like really motivated and then some people were just coming in late and just wouldn't do the work. So, so she felt that it really skewed the, like the, the level of like motivation, like in our cohort, everyone was staying late. Everyone came in early. You know, if you came in nine to five, you were, you were not doing your job, you know, it right. So, so she's like, it wasn't like that at all in that, in that cohort that she mentored. That, that was, that was perfect. Like the work work ethic definitely goes down. Um, yeah. It, seeing it from a, from a mentoring perspective, it was it was frustrating, especially when you know we would be offering like our time after class. We'd be offering like extremely late nights. Just hey, ping us or meet with us. We would meet with them. There were there were a few students I remember who um, it's just. I would, you know, approach them. We would have a session of just like talking about the code, talking about what they're doing, and they're like, you know, this is great. I feel like I'm really getting my money's worth. It's like, yeah, you know, approach me anytime, ping me, message me. You, you know, where I live. I live in that apartment. We all live in this <laughs> housing, you know. But that was it. Never heard from them. You know? It's the work ethic definitely suffered. I feel like as soon as they removed base camp, I was just unfortunate for. It was unfortunate for the people who, who definitely had that drive, but uh, it, it didn't it wasn't like too much of a, a burden, I guess. I guess you would call it a burden. I'm not too really sure, but um, because those people who did have that drive, they found alternate ways. If they couldn't, you know, do group learning with their peers, um, they're the ones who would approach the staff more often. So it, uh, the people who really wanted to be there, they didn't. I felt like they didn't suffer that much. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I guess I would say like also on that. I feel like if if you like having some people that are like more motivated and some people are not as much. I feel like people that are motivated really just. I don't think they're like it's at a disadvantage um, having people in their cohort. I mean, if you're maybe in a group group project, you might do a lot of the work. But other than that, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I end up learning more. <laughs> Well, and, and like, I think with like, it is a business. And so I think that was a business decision to drop the, the, the base, base camp. camp. But, um, so I like, it leaves like a bad taste in my mouth. Cause I feel like it, it, um, you get people in there for money and instead of people who are prepared, like for me, if I wouldn't have had to do the boot camp or the base camp, I would have never, I mean, I would have, I probably would have worked harder cause I, I would work code like 14 hours a day, but, but like, it would, it, that definitely helped me a lot. And, uh, and then like, so with the girl in the next cohort, she was, she happened to be the only girl, which is, is fine for some people, but, and then they just had a really, a ton of 
unmotivated people. And it was a small cohort. There was only 10 people in there. So she would like show up and she'd be like the only person there. And then everyone would be goofing off, you know? So like for her, she, it, it was devastating for her. Like, you're right. Some people can like take that as a challenge and work on like take more of the project. But some people, it's just like, you want to collaborate. You want to get that experience and you don't get it. And when you have a bigger cohort or when you have more motivated students, you can kind of pivot and move. But, but it can actually be just, it can also really affect you as well. Okay. That definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, I think, and Ethan, one thing that you said kind of stuck with me, it's if you're motivated, you're going to learn either way. And you might even have to do more project work, but, um, you know, instead of seeing that as a negative, it just means that you had to do more work and get more experience. And I, I think that could be a very positive thing for you. So one thing that can also make a break a program are the instructors. What do you guys think of your instructors? I liked mine, uh, most of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead. We had one, um, we had like, they would just rotate the teachers, like they would teach certain subjects. And uh, um, one of them was, her name's Missy. And she was so amazing because she would, she would break things down to like really, really simple concepts instead of like, like some people were just talked in a high, like a, on higher level concepts, like, like you knew code more, <laughs> you know, and she would be like, this is a box and it has a little sign on it and it's going to, we're going to put things in it. You know, like she would break it down really easily. And then she would ask after she done, was done explaining something, she'd ask if anyone had questions and then she'd stop, which is time is, is really compacted in these boot camps. So, but she would wait for like 30 seconds or longer for the, scared people in the back to ask the, ask the questions. And then even if no one asked a question, she'd give a really quick synopsis of what she just covered. So for me, that was so great. And she was the best. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Oh, I, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I was going to say, I, I loved like our instructors. I think it was helpful that they, at least all the ones, I think this is probably true with most, most of the instructors at Dev Mountain is that they all went through the course at one time or another. Um, so they know, they know how it feels, you know, they know that the pressure and they, and they know um, kind of the stress you're in. So uh, it's helpful. We did go through several like head instructors. I think we went through two of them. They just like either got promoted and moved or got a, a another job. So uh, that was a little bit challenging to kind of like, have a lot of that transition, but I feel like our cohort did really well in spite of all that. So, okay. So they only hire people who have gone through Dev Mountain specifically. I don't think so. I don't think that's true, but I'm saying in my experience with the ones that, that I had, okay. um, they had all been through Dev Mountain. Um, and I found, I found that helpful. I think the mentors, do they have, I think the mentors have to go through Dev Mountain. Is that right, Sean? at least at our campus and um, yeah, I think Dallas too. Um, I'm sure you talk is just so many, there's so many people there, but uh, yeah, we all were previous students from a previous cohort. But my, my instructor, uh, his name is uh, Tyler Collier and he actually- uh, Famous. He, sorry, what? I said he's famous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, uh, uh, I think, I believe he started, uh, as the Phoenix camp is open. So he's, you know, he was there from day one. So they needed an instructor. He was the, the dog's awake now. Uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, he was great. And he started since the first cohort. And um, what I enjoyed about uh, him being my instructor uh, was the fact that he, because of all the time constraints, right? Like he knew uh, how far to go with certain topics because you know people would ask questions because you know, we're all like what is all this you know what does that mean what does that mean what does that mean it gets to a point where he's just he's just saying okay well um you know like he said it and it obviously sounds going to be a much nicer way but it was just like how about you figure that out and you let me know <laughs> that way you know we could all then we all move on right and and that was nice because again the, that cohort i was in uh, we were all pretty motivated and and whenever he would say you know just look that up or whatever in his own words uh we would do that and it was it was kind of um it was encouraging to have an instructor kind of like believe in you to do that right because you could just google something and it's just completely wrong but 
the other thing too uh, about him was you got to a certain you might have gotten to a certain point where you felt comfortable where you were at and you just you just wanted to see okay what would be the next step if you know i were to take that or if you were to take that and he would be willing to sit down with you and be like okay well you know here's where you're at um here's where i what i think you should look up next if you really wanted to go on ahead you know and, I, and I, that was something I, I definitely enjoyed um about him uh, definitely uh he's not there anymore uh a couple cohorts after i finished um he moved on right now the instructor is a, a previous student uh he's been he's teaching a few cohorts at this point um and from what I've, I've heard good things about him i've heard anything negative so i've talked to a lot of students in these cohorts so. yeah i will say that i wasn't the the overachiever and i mean like the person who asked like all the complicated questions but um there was a bunch of them in our class and the instructors always made like after hours times so like hey yeah we have to keep going on this topic but why don't we you know come and see me and we can talk about this more so like if you if you're like more advanced like ethan or or you know if you have if you're just picking it up really well you can still get the help you need and like keep learning you're not like capped off with the people who are lagging behind or whatever okay all right that's really good to hear um like i said i really think it's the instructors that make or break a program um, even if the curriculum's not so great or it's had changes made that you might not agree with. Um, and in my experience, for some reason, for different reasons, a lot of head instructors will kind of transition out. I've noticed that at a lot of boot camps. Um, a lot of it, I mean, they're very qualified people. They're usually people that be, uh, get along with everyone and they, I'm sure they get a lot of really good offers. So good for them for finding the next opportunity, but it's good to hear that your experience was good overall. Um, I was going to ask a question, but I completely forgot it. So let's move on. How about when you graduated? What was your experience like uh, with, well, let's ask this. Did Dev Mountain provide any sort of job assistance or mentorship once you guys graduated? What did that look like? Uh I'll go. Um, so before we graduated, like on the weeks up to our graduation, then they would help us, you know, work on our resume and our portfolio, like our portfolio. And uh, like they, they suggested we use Wix because they're like, focus on your projects, build your portfolio when you graduate. Um, and uh, some people just whipped out their portfolio. I use Wix, but, uh, and then they would have like mock interviews and they would have someone like, go over all your stuff and give you pointers and and then i think that was it that's all i can think of right now i love that they recommended wix i know that can be a controversial opinion but your portfolio is like it, it's not interesting whatsoever like your projects and the depth of your projects and the type of problems that you solve that's interesting that creates a really good constructive conversation in the interview so um i think every developer has this concept that I can code, I can build anything I want, so I should build everything, right? And that's not always the best strategy. Um, so I'm really glad that was recommended to you. Ultimately, I did build my own portfolio, but at the time I was just so overwhelmed with just mm -hmm. getting to the deadline with my group project, you know? And so it was really nice to not have to like <laughs> worry about it at the time. But yeah, you're right. You can still you can still use website builders and but, or you can just make one cool, a cool one later. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, I still use stuff like that for landing pages when I'm launching a new app or anything like that. Um, yeah, you can always build it down the road. What, uh, so maybe I missed it. Do they provide any sort of like, so they, they kind of help you get your portfolio ready, your resume ready. Do they provide any sort of like weekly sessions to see how the job search is going or anything like that? Do you have like a career advisor you can connect with on a consistent basis? We did have the job fairs, but that's not the same thing. <laughs> yeah, those, those were interesting too, because those were primarily in Utah. And oh. you know, there's, there's Phoenix, you know, it's... The, the, the They're having them about, now though, right? I see them in Slack. Uh, 
I think nowadays, yeah, just back when back when I was in it, the the, the saving grace again was was Tyler. I um, mean, he would bring in guest speakers, you know, because of the network that he has, and that that guest speaker would be you know helping us with um, stuff like LinkedIn, what to show us uh, resume examples, stuff like that. And there there was a there was a situation where it did conflict with what the person uh, Dev Mountain was saying. And it was a funny situation because like I had used that guest speaker's advice and then I was being told to badge, I need to change all this to what Dev Mountain wanted. It, it's, uh, it's gotten a lot better. It's gotten a lot better. I've seen what, um, what they do now, how they help the students now, at least with resume building and LinkedIn stuff. And it's definitely a lot better, but that, that was just a funny situation back then. There wasn't at least for, for us in Phoenix, um, anything really post-grad uh, in terms of like job hunting or anything, you know, there was that Slack channel where they would post jobs. Um, but like, it seemed primarily if there were benefits, they were at the Utah campus first. Yeah, that makes, uh, I mean, that doesn't make sense, but that, that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I would say, Cause like I went to the Dallas camp- campus and um, they had a lot of connections with, cause Dallas has a lot of like startups and um, tech companies. And so there was a lot of opportunities in Dallas. I personally was not looking for jobs in Dallas. Um, I was trying to move back to, to Alabama, which is where I was from. So um, a lot of the, the connections that like, we even went to some meetups, um, some tech meetups, um, which were really fun. I think we went to, there was one that was like match.com. We went to this like really fancy building and like, they, like Dev Mount was able to get us, I don't know, entry into them. So like we were able to like make connections, but a lot of it was in that area. Um, so that was like a little bit of a challenge, but I really loved all the link. Like they gave you like pointers on LinkedIn. You had to connect with so many people. And, you know, that was one thing that was helpful for me. I could connect with people in the city where I wanted to look for jobs. Um, and I know maybe we're not quite there yet, but that's like ended up how I actually got the job I have is by connecting with someone when I was actually still in the, in the boot camp. So. Yeah. I do remember them having, we had to like message, we had to connect and then message a certain amount of people about yeah. like, like, it was a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was, it was a, a lot more than you'd think <laughs> like with LinkedIn and which is cool. I mean, it, cause I think I'm someone who's in the networking camp. Like I think networking is massive. It's not the only way, but for me it was. And, uh, so I think it was really nice to like actually have someone kind of make me do it to bash, <laughs> you know, I, uh, uh go ahead. In Utah, they do have, um, Dev Mountain did, does have, uh, uh, the job fair. So they just get a bunch of companies here in Utah and then you come in and you with your necktie or whatever and your resume and you go and you get to talk to like, there's always like 20 companies there. And you need to go just talk to the, the people recruiting and sometimes there are developers there and you give them your resume, you can talk about like what they're doing. And so it's, it's actually really cool. It, it does suck that they don't do that in all, at all the campuses, but, and they do them twice a year. So they do it like, like October-ish time and I think in May. I think they might do that at the Dallas campus, but I think the, the like the cohort I was in was like right between them because oh. I wasn't living in Dallas, I wasn't able to go to it. So, yeah, the one time um, the job that job fair happened in Phoenix um, was like yeah that the cohort I was in that cohort where it was going to happen, you know, so it was cool. But from that point and from the time that I worked there until I left, that. That was it. Like uh, the other cool thing with Tyler was that that meetup he you know he runs in, in Phoenix, uh, or he used to run in Phoenix, and so that was just another opportunity that he, he provided. Um, even you know let us leave early if we were going to the that meetup, uh, just to network you know and just see what what things are like and talk to some people and but but yeah I've only ever seen experienced one job fair in Phoenix during my time there as a student and working. At. There was lots of meetups that we would go to as well. 
It, it, okay, so it felt like a lot of the support that was given was community led. It was maybe an instructor stepping up or like connecting you with the rest of the cohort or the rest of the alumni, uh, which could be really, really beneficial. Um, I do wish they would consider like, you know, you guys graduated in 2018. I do hope they seriously consider having an advisor on staff. I think that makes a world of difference. They have one now. They have a team. Do they? Yeah, I think when I went, they were like transitioning. I think the whole team, trans nope, no, the one guy's still there, Eric Simmons. But, um, but they do have a, a support team, but it's from what I've understood, it's primarily on Slack. It's just like they post jobs and, and then the job fair when it happens in Utah. And then they'll help, I think they'll help with resume critiques and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Um, I'm glad they added that in. That's really good to hear. So I love the job fair thing. Um, our coding boot camp really didn't do that. We had one when we were all feeling overwhelmed and lacked sleep and didn't really have a lot of time to prepare. But I love that they do it like ev like twice a year. That's phenomenal. Um, job Utah. fair in Utah. Yeah. Well, we had that because we had a New York campus. We had a Chicago campus and New York always got favored. And that was one thing, the Chicago campus, because I went to Chicago we were frustrated about and our instructors fought for us. Um, but I, I do think that's a common theme when you have multiple campuses. Okay. So let's, we've, we've kind of, you guys have given some constructive feedback, but I want to dig in a little bit more overall. It sounds like the experience was good. All of you got jobs, right? That's the end goal of the, the day. And then you continue growing as a developer throughout your work. And uh, so overall, the experience was good. But if you had to provide constructive criticism for them, things that you would change, think about like the application process, the, uh, and Ethan, actually, before I forget, complete tangent, awesome job looking at the camera and talking. I have been trying to do that. And I can't like, I noticed you do that. I can never do that with any of my YouTube videos. I'm always like looking around. Like I actually <laughs> recorded the amount of time I could actually look at the camera. It's like 20% of the time. I'm terrible with it. So I just wanted to Congratulations on that. That's a hard skill to master. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. I'm, okay. on, I'm on the Zoom calls a lot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot of practice. Um, anyways, what constructive criticism would you give thinking about the application process, the curriculum, the instructors, the postgraduate, job assistants? Those are kind of like the four categories I like to recommend, but if you have any others, let me know. But what constructive criticism would you give? And feel free to think about it for a little bit. Let me fix my mic. I already know one. Uh, I mean, definitely have some sort of, I don't want to call it a vetting process, but, you know, vetting process during the application process. It's not just to keep people from coming, but to at least give someone the chance, maybe they, for whatever reason, even though they're thinking of a career change, they didn't even look at any of the material beforehand. It at least gives them the chance right then and there to be like, before they move out across state, you know, to come to the housing or they leave their job or whatever, to see if at the very least this is what they want to do now or at all um, versus doing it maybe a little bit later and this kind of jump starts the whole, let me dig into this more now. Um, if, because we talked about how, yeah, it's, it's a business, Maybe they do something like, uh, what is it, Hack Reactor that um, they, you know, they take some, some salary, like they help you get a job and then X amount of salary goes to them or whatever. Um, maybe you do that too. I don't know. But yeah, I just, I just think there needs to be some sort of preliminary thing. To get it doesn't in. have to be like crazy high bar too. It, it, just, it, there, it just needs honestly. to... Yeah, I mean, it, to, if, even even just to help the student, like you yeah. are at a level now, you can get in this accelerated course. You know, it's not to exclude anyone. It's to is to, it's like just setting a milestone. Like get to this point so you can do this. You know, <laughs> like yeah. I I mean, I think that's really healthy. Um, and a lot of people that apply to top coding boot camps, they fail and then they apply again. It kind of shows a little window into their character of they're probably going to succeed if they're that resilient and they're that persistent about it they really want it that also illustrates that to the boot camp um i don't, I don't think it's a bad thing to get rejected in fact i look at rejection rates and i ask that what and i encourage people to actually ask rejection rates at a coding boot camp to uh, see if they have 
like what their process is like of making sure everyone is coming in on the same level because that does change the experience a little bit. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's a bad thing to get rejected once and apply again. Something that could be cool would be, um, because you said it, I think I strongly agree that the instructor can make or break your experience at a boot camp. And so I think it'd be kind of cool if boot camps would um, do like a, like a, almost like a, a um, career fair or whatever, where you come and you like meet the instructors and you like see the space and you um, just get to talk to people about what you're going to go do. I know, not, I know a lot of people are traveling from out of state and I can't necessarily swing that, but even just like a virtual one, mm-hmm. obviously virtual right now, but. Yeah, I really like that idea. That's a good idea. Just the Zoom call. Um, like even if the coding boot camp has a meetup where they have um, current staff or instructors that kind of just come on, you can ask them questions, kind of like a little panel. I think that's really yeah. helpful. Cool. Anything else? I think the only thing kind of going off of that, the only thing that really wasn't my favorite about Dev Mountain, because I, I love Dev Mountain. I learned so much from it and got a lot of confidence from going through the course, um, was just the, the, the transition, like I mentioned before, about going through several instructors. Um, that's kind of, and it can be taken as a good thing too, because that's kind of the industry, right? Like, people don't stay in the same jobs for very long. So if you get a job and then your boss all of a sudden, you know, three months later gets another job or gets a promotion and people coming in, that's changing. That is kind of the industry that you're, you're trying to looking to get into. Um, so I don't see it all as negative, but I think we just had such a turnover of, of people that were working at the Dallas campus that it kind of made it a little bit challenging. Like we're, we were there longer than some people, <laughs> some of the inst- people that were instructing us. Um, so I don't, I don't know exactly what I would do to fix that. Maybe some sort of consistency or I, I don't know, but um, that is also just the nature of, of the industry. I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up because I think I want to do a podcast episode on that. How do you retain software engineers? Because that is a normal thing in the tech industry. I think that's a really interesting conversation. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do an episode on that. Thank you. I think Sean would probably have more insight than I would on this, but I think they should pay their their TAs or instructor instructors and assistants more because like I like the instructors, but really the people who were there in the trenches with you were the um, teachers assistants like and and they would work he, he, like like Sean said, they'd be like available all the time. like you get midnight and you're crying on your code, you know you can call someone <laughs> and uh, and so I just I just think that if they paid them more it it is experience especially when you're coming out like you sound it sounds like you went right into mentoring after you graduated then it's it's a way to get experience it's a way to stay on for three months and you know or chunks of time and yeah i don't know i I think they should pay them more they make enough money i'm sure they can pay their instructors more (laughs) yeah that's an interesting idea it really is. Um, I know how much they paid the instructors at my coding boot camp too, and I felt like they deserved a little bit more. Yeah. Now, I, I think in general, mentors don't get paid a lot of money. And the problem is, I even talked about this on the last past uh, podcast episode, but there was this idea that sometimes boot camps can be predatory, where they bring in people that don't have any work experience. Because I think people underestimate the amount of money you can make as a software engineer. And if you just come out of a coding boot camp and you bring someone in for a very low pay, it's like, well, you know, they have bills to pay. You know, they kind of pushed all of that aside and you bring someone in with very low pay. It's like, at least you have some money coming in. Probably, you know, as a mentor, you probably have more money coming in than your last profession. A lot of people that have been working part-time jobs and everything. And I think coding boot camps need to be careful of that. And so, you know, as long as that mentor is benefiting in like, getting a huge boost into a really solid software engineering position, I do think it kind of balances things out and it makes it a little bit fair. And most mentors do because you kind of go through the curriculum again and you kind of have to teach it and you're able to retain that knowledge. But um, yeah, pay pays like a really interesting and uh, just an interesting topic with mentors. That was a good yeah. topic to bring up. And that is a good point. They do get, you do get a lot of experience out of it. I mean, what's your, what's your, 
opinion on it. Yeah, I mean, the, the great, there are a couple of great things. I mean, yeah, we got to go through, we got to see the curriculum again. So it was kind of just solidifying that base, that base curriculum, right? But then the other cool part that, um, that I was experiencing too is that uh, every student, you know, had a, had a different, had a different question. And it kind of made you think of that, you know, piece of code or that concept in a different way. And so that also helped you as a mentor, as you know, learn as a developer, learn, because then it's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Um, and it, it's always, and that, that was just great. And on top of that too, um, you know, we're not mentoring during class time when the instructor's teaching, you know, there's really nothing for us to do at that point in time. So what was nice about that was we got to just, just work on whatever we wanted to work on. Um, what was nice about the Phoenix campus uh, working there, uh, we were actually developing pieces of software to help things along for the students, for the staff. So that was kind of the, the work experience there in a way. Um, and then on top of that, there were just cool things we were talking to each other about and we just had time to do it. So definitely a lot, a lot of learning even while mentoring. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it is. I agree with that. Um, yeah, maybe, I, I guess there is kind of a line that um, you can cross where um, you are giving an advantage towards them, or you're kind of just using them. Um, but I have not heard of a mentor that hasn't landed a really solid job. Um, all <laughs> full stack academy mentors. What's that? It's a good point. <laughs> yeah, and all full stack academy mentors uh, really have a solid career. I I get to know them. A lot of my mentors at my meetup were full stack academy mentors. I usually exclusively recruit them to help me with the meetup. So um, yeah, just cool. Yes, I'm glad someone who's going to be a mentor could just think of it as like a just an invest like a little bit more investment for like a like a bump up in job and pay later. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really good way to look at it. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, this was good. This is, uh, I think you guys, you appear to be honest. Like it, it felt like you guys, uh, I mean, you didn't really hold anything back. You gave both positive and constructive feedback. So it was really cool to hear about Dead Mountain. Um, I think that's it. That's pretty much everything I wanted to ask. So uh, we have an extra five minutes. So what I'd like to do is kind of end with one last question for aspiring developers that are trying to get into the industry and try to get a job, what would be your one piece of feedback for them? Or even a better way to think about it, what would be one piece of feedback that you wish you had gotten when you were trying to become a developer? Well, okay, this is, I don't want to sound cocky, but like, I felt like I did all I had, like, I, I gave it my all. I did what I needed to do. So I guess one, one thing I would, I would want to tell someone who's looking interested in any boot camp would be don't wait. Even if they're, you know, if there's no base camp or no application process besides just signing up, right? Don't wait for that process to start learning. If you're thinking about joining, you know, months from now, if you're already in the process and you're going to be starting weeks or days from now, um, don't be... Don't wait for that. Don't wait for it to start. Already be looking at YouTube tutorials. Look at you know vanilla JavaScript, HTML, CSS. All that stuff is going to help you going into it. You by that point you have access or you can get access to the course curriculum, so you can look some stuff up. And if you're watching this, and obviously you're watching this if you're listening to this, um, <laughs> ping me. I mean, if you're if you're confused about what you should do, you see this curriculum and you don't know, just Message me on LinkedIn. I'm sure we'll uh, share our LinkedIn stuff soon. I've seen the other ones here. <laughs> <laughs> we do do that. You're right. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, it might be something similar. Um, just try to get a feel for what you're actually getting into. Um, like, have coffee chat. Like, pretty much every software developer I've ever met is happy to talk about what they do. Like they're all willing to share knowledge and no one's like, you can't know until you're in the club, you know? So um, reach out to people on LinkedIn, try to get some coffee chats. If you know any software developers, you know, go out and talk to them and then start building right away. Like even if it's just a HTML, CSS, just start building before you even get into the bootcamp. So you can get a feel for what you're getting into before you 
drop 15 grand and you're buried up to your neck in, <laughs> in code problems. So. That's really good advice. That's true. I like that. Yeah, yeah I think I, I agree with what Amy and Sean. I think a lot of it has to do with you really got to like, it sounds kind of cliche, but you really got to want it because like no one's going to hand you like a software developer job um, and you really have to work for it. And you kind of reap the benefits of all those. Like I think back when I was doing the coding boot camp, and I'm sure everyone knows those long nights and you like stay up till like three in the morning and you're, you're, you're like, you're like, none of this makes sense. Why am I even, what am I even doing? And you know, the, there's something like the imposter syndrome is real and all these different things. But I, I think powering through and then like figuring out, I just like, I remember one instance, like doing my coding boot camp, I worked on this for my personal project, this trying to figure out this Google API for, it was like a week and I finally figured it out. I was just like so happy. And like, I still think back to that moment of like, I could not figure it out. I didn't think I could. And then I did. And like having that confidence is like, is going to be so valuable. So like keep power, I guess just keep powering through and like, um, working at it. Cause you're, you're going to reap the benefits at some point. And powering through is an interesting idea because a lot of people lean on confidence or not confidence. They lean on motivation to get them through it. And motivation dies like many times. There's several days where you just don't want to do it. Um, and if you don't lean on motivation, you just trust the process. You continue coding. Like as long as you have a plan and you just execute the plan over time, that confidence will build over time. That knowledge will be retained. And I think like that's pretty much what you're illustrating with power through it. I think that's really good advice cool well that's it so let's uh go ahead and do our outros if you want to feel free to just say bye to everyone or mention your linkedin sean you had mentioned that you'd like uh people to connect with you so we'll just go one at a time how about you sean there it You're is. Mute. Cool. all right uh yeah please ping me if you have any questions about the uh, curriculum that you're you know of the, of the boot camp you're going to go into I can at least help you point you in the right direction of maybe what tutorials to watch going into it. My LinkedIn, linkedin.com slash I N slash Sean dash Parmar. All right. That's that. Thank you. Thank you for having me on Don. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks Sean. How about you, Ethan? Uh, yeah, I kind of like what I just said. I think it's, it can be hard to industry to get into like software development and web development, but said, I think it's, it's worth it. Um, I love what I do. I don't think I would do it if I didn't love it. So, um, I hope that maybe this is helpful and people, you guys watching this to help try to figure out like, is this for me? Am I, is Dev Mountain for me? Is it boot camp for me? So, um, yeah, I just, I hope that you figure out what you're, if this, I hope that this was helpful. So, um, yeah. And thanks Don for, for having me. Yeah, for sure. That's very kind of you to think about the viewer, Ethan. I think a lot of people are going to find some of, actually, most of what you said very relatable, too. I think you touched on a lot of things, a lot of thoughts that people are thinking about. How about you, Amy? Um, yeah, LinkedIn is, is the place to connect. Um, and yet reach out, same, same thing, just if you're feeling, if you're interested in attending one, if you're attending, if you're currently in one, if you're self-teaching anything, because... Um, it's definitely, or for me, I don't know about everyone else. It's a roller coaster ride. <laughs> you know, like some days you're like, this is the best thing ever. And some days you're like, what am I doing with my life? So, you know, wherever you are in your roller coaster, you can always reach out, um, have a coffee chat, have a Zoom. Um, my LinkedIn is the LinkedIn URL, Amy hyphen Knudsen. And uh, just put something in your connect message. Because if you're just going to randomly connect, I might not connect. So send a message. <laughs> That's fair. And there's a lot of spam going on where they don't give you any idea why they're connecting until yeah. it's too late. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, so if you guys want to kind of see more of my content, I actually have a, it's a pretty hard deadline. I've been live coding on Twitch TV. So Twitch TV slash Don the developer. Um, been doing a lot of stuff for my business. So I finally get a chance to code again. It's been about six months, but uh, I'm going to be releasing a new full stack JavaScript app. Feel free to come in, ask questions. Um, a lot of people will just come in even with really, really simple questions, even though I'm, I might be working on stuff you might not understand 
just yet, like I highly encourage you to like come in and ask like really fundamental questions. Um, I can even break it down as much as I possibly can for you and we'll, we'll jump back into the basics. So, um, and that's, that's pretty much it. If you like this podcast, uh, subscribe. Um, if it's Apple Podcasts, definitely leave a review. If it's YouTube, leave a comment. That continues to motivate me to make more episodes like this. Uh, but uh, that's it. So, Sean, Ethan, Amy, thanks so much for coming on. And I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. Thank you.